It is unclear what happened to Hornet at the end of Hollow Knight. Many possible scenarios play out. In one of them, Hornet can be seen looking down at the corpse of the knight, or, well, what remains of the knight, after it made the ultimate sacrifice by beating the heart of infection at Halonist. In another, Hornet joins the knight in eternal solitude and slumber, chained along with her sibling, her future unclear. Perhaps under different circumstances, Hornet finds herself face to face with the Hollow Knight, the true and tested so-called pure vessel trained to perfection. It does raise a question, however, how at the end of any of these scenarios you find yourself captured, brought to a distant land against your own will. Being the daughter of the Pale King, Halonest is all she ever knew. Perhaps she was also sold on the lie that Halonest is everything that remains, the eternal kingdom after all. And perhaps it was her mother's lineage that showed her the reality of the world outside the kingdom she was born in. Distant lands, especially the one her people come from, the kingdom of Farloom as they call it. And now she finds herself captured, being taken back to the land of her mother. It is not, however, her people who captured her. It is some foreign invaders, intruding upon Farloom's sacred holy land with their bells and tolls, putting bugs under their trance. Like the infection seeping through Halonest, these bugs have taken complete control of Farloom. And now, perhaps they're after the final piece of the puzzle, Hornet. As the echoes of their bell tolls can be heard far away, they carry their prized possession to the crown of Farloom, the top of a citadel. But, as fate would have it, things can be very unpredictable in these lands. Before you know it, someone breaks Hornet out of her cage of seal of binding using a powerful bug. Looks like Hornet got herself a silent guardian, maybe someone who wants Hornet free. Whoever was responsible for her freedom though shall remain unknown for a long time. For now, she finds herself falling, falling to the depths of Farloom, the very bottom unaware of the long, arduous journey that awaits her in the kingdom of Farloom. They see your beauty, so frail and fine. They see your peace, woven of faith and toil. They forget your heart, bound in slumber and servitude. When you wake, they shall see your truth, a beast's nature, bare to all. Farloom's Folly, a poem written by Conductor Romino. In simpler terms, a poem that seems to be dedicated to those same capturers who took over the kingdom. A poem mocking them and calling them foolish. We don't know who Conductor Romino is, but going by the name, conductors are usually the ones to conduct music. They carry with them a baton, which they use to orchestrate the entire kingdom of Farloom. Perhaps they were a respected member of Farloom back when the kingdom belonged to its respective native people. But after being captured, all they can do is tell the capturers how foolish their efforts are. The same capturers who have forgotten just what they're dealing with. And perhaps it is Hornet and her beast-like nature that will be a shocking reminder to those of what they're up against. For now though, Hornet finds herself weak, strained, barely able to move, at the bottom of a new foreign kingdom. Vulnerable, surrounded by wild bugs. The land of Moss Grotto is overcome with lush green moss. The bugs residing in this area seem to be far removed from the burdens of society, far removed from the capturers of the kingdom. They seem to be living in whatever bastion of safety is left in Farloom. So it's not far-fetched that when a foreign entity falls into their land from the heavens, they attack. Protective of their habitat built by bone and shell, these creatures aren't mindless beasts that you would find outside the kingdom in the forgotten lands between. They have their own architecture, their own society and ways of living that they need to protect because that's all that's left. And who else to be more protective than a mother? When her children feel threatened, she attacks, lunging at Hornet with everything she's got as her children watch from the background. Watch as their mother desperately tries to ward off this foreign entity, the unknown. Despite her weakened state though, she is no match for the demigod, that is Hornet. Being born to the Pale Worm and raised by the Queen of the Hive, even in her weakened state, Hornet is not someone to be challenged, which just goes to add to the mystery of how the Bell cultists ever even managed to capture her, or how they ever managed to capture the whole kingdom of Farloom. 
Clearly those bugs are hiding more than they know, and they have more cards up their sleeves. For now, we continue on, hoping to find more answers, but only being left with more questions than we started with. Hornet makes a quick dispatch of the Moss Mother, and while some might call her ruthless, I think she just knows better. It is just life after all. As the bugs of the grotto will soon come to find out, hopefully, Hornet is not there to cause harm to make up for their loss, even if that is possible. Hopefully Hornet can provide a much safer environment for the children of the Moss Mother to grow up and thrive in, an environment ridden of fear of the cultists. But now, she has reached her limit, last of her strength exhausting. A mysterious figure walks towards her, friend or foe, she wonders. But as she draws her weapon in anticipation, it's too late and she collapses. Even a demigod can be pushed to their limits. Something is off. Her strength, she feels, is gone. And all that's left is just overwhelming fatigue. Later in her journey, Hornet is climbing up, making her way to the top of the kingdom, the top of the citadel, from the very pits of Mossy Grotto. Now she finds herself in an area unlike anything she has ever seen in her whole life. An area overflowing with lava and bones. The deep docks. An area perhaps mirroring the industrial revolution of our world. The bugs here seem to be at the bottom of the food chain, toiling away in hot molten coal mines, sending up resources to the citadel to keep the propaganda and the war machine running. Hornet finds herself among strange bell-headed creatures. Their orders seem to be kill on sight. Despite the challenges though, Hornet finds herself growing stronger after every encounter. Every single beast and bug she slains grants her more and more strength. While nowhere near the peak of her power, she is slowly recovering. As Conductor Romino had said, the captors of this kingdom don't seem to realize just who they're dealing with. Amongst all the hostility, a friendly face? The Forge Daughter, who also seems to be from a royal heritage, is a blacksmith of some kind. But never say that to her face, because she is not a simple blacksmith. The Forge Daughter and her little friend Balo seems to be the only bugs in the deep docks who have any sense left. The Forge Daughter herself comes from an ancient line and serves an honorable role. This can explain why she is immune to the song of her capturers, but Balo, he is another mystery of his own. Like every other encounter so far, this raises more questions than answers for Hornet, but for now, a companion is more than she could ask for. And while the proud warrior Hornet is, she does realize the gravity of the situation of being in a foreign kingdom without her original strength. So for now she falls, asking the Forge Daughter to lend her her aid. For now though, a brand new friendship. One of many to come later in the kingdom of Farloon. But Hornet would have to pick her people carefully. Friends or foes? That seems to be the big question in Farloom. But don't worry, Hornet is not the one to be talked down by anyone. Definitely not an arrogant stranger. As she approaches this mysterious hooded figure, she can't help but notice the bugs that are being conducted by the said stranger. With caution and curiosity, she approaches. But before she could get a single word in, she finds herself being mocked by the stranger. Perhaps it is a trap. Perhaps they just want to test her strength. Either way, she's not about to back down from a challenge. That's just not the bug she was raised to be. Without a doubt in her mind, she lifts her needle, accepting the challenge. And the battle ensues. While victory once again blessed our demigod bug, it was nowhere near as easy as the basic bugs of Mossy Grotto. With a thoughtful look in her eyes, Hornet wonders where the stranger ran off to. Perhaps they'll encounter each other again. Perhaps next time, she won't let them get away that easily not without answering her burning questions. Friend or foe? As she nears the end of her introduction to this foreign land, she finds herself in a room with a mysterious bell. Now getting tired of the ever-growing mysteries, she decides to ring the bell, just to see what happens. She is prepared for anything. Mysterious hunters, fleeting caravans, righteous defenders, the ever-expanding towns comprising this entire giant kingdom, her heritage, the mysterious powers that have taken control of her motherland. She will hunt her captors, discover her song, and most importantly, save her haunted land.
Will you join her? 